So a trapezoid, or uh, would look something like this. And if you look at it, uh, this from the side, that's what an elephant would put his foot on. But usually it was circular on the bottom, right? So it technically it couldn't be a trapezoid. Okay. So does it? Does everybody have kind of a version of this? Does anybody have something that they would consider not a trapezoid, but not a parallelogram? Me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Shiloh's just got some random little quadrilateral. I also love that. I have a good one. Who's thinking of it? Oh, Jackson's got a good one. Okay. Uh, what about Jax? Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to you. So keep that in mind for uh, when we get to this. So, how do I describe this? So, this is a special quadrilateral because why? Top of one, two, Okay, so. A quadrilateral, right? Because that's only saying what? Jackson, do you start? Yeah. Why do we say it's quadrilateral? Four sides. Four sides. So what are you going to say then? One, With? One set of parallelograms. Exactly. One set of opposite parallel Sides. And again, how do I show everybody that they're parallel? Mm. Oh, parallel. sorry. Pause. 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 Now, now I got a couple um, uh, pictures of trapezoids on her paper. Okay, one of the pictures that a lot of people recognize this as a trapezoid. One of them that gets kind of left out is when there's a right angle here. Oh. Would you still consider that a trapezoid? Yeah. Right? By definition, it's gotta be, right? Because this up here and this down here are still parallel to each other. So just because there's a, a legs that are perpendicular don't automatically think that it's not true, okay? So one set of opposite parallel sides. These opposite parallel sides are called the bases. So this is B1, a lot of times they show, and B2. But notice that it's a subscript, right? It's underneath the Bs, bless you. And so then my non-parallel sides are called the legs. So this is a leg, and this is a leg. So the difference between a trapezoid and a parallelogram is that we don't have those uh, two sets of parallel things, right? Okay. From there then we introduce a base angle. What do you think the base angles are? Okay, so the top and the bottom angles that um, of a trapezoid, right here, and this one, those would be base angles. And so if these are parallel, what would we consider those two angles back to back? Yeah, so base angles are literally consecutive interior angles. So then all the rules of the parallel stuff all find this. What do you mean parallel stuff? Like ultimate, you know, you have transversals and stuff, things like that. Right, but we're not going to really have alternate things here because we do, uh, we'll never have that outside angle. Okay? So if these are consecutive interior angles, they're going to what? Okay, be supplementary or add up to 180. You guys are geniuses now. Thinking about this stuff now. So they're consecutive. Now, this try or this trapezoid right here, obviously, hopefully everybody can tell that this leg right here is definitely different than that leg right there, right? Now over here, maybe not so much. 
So let's say that these two legs are the same. What did we call something that had two legs that were the same? We called it an isosceles triangle earlier. So now we can have an isosceles triangle. And again, I'm lazy, so I'm just going to say trap. So what's an isosceles trapezoid? How can we describe it? The legs are what? Congruent. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Which leads us to some terms. Where are we at? 21 already, huh? 621. If a trapezoid is isosceles, So this is just saying what we just set up here, but in pure form. Both pairs of legs, or both pairs of base angles, are congruent. Right. So if this is the same as this, and we put our slashes in there, then if we put this in over here, they should be the exact same thing. But not necessarily over here, right? This one's 90 and 90, this one's definitely not 90 and 90. But if it's an isosceles, then it is. Sound good? Their um, 622 is basically kind of like the converse of this. Okay, so the first one is saying, we are saying that it's an isosceles trapezoid. The second one is just showing that you have congruent base angles. So if a trapezoid, any trapezoid that we're talking about has one pair of congruent bases, or base angles, sorry, then it is an isosceles trapezoid. Because if it's, if it's true on one side, it should be true on the other side. And then last but not least for our trapezoid, trapezoid is isosceles also. What's IFF mean again? <laughs> if and only if the diagonals are congruent. So if we could come back here. Obviously, if you drew this diagonal right here, can you be real close to that one, right? That's what it's saying. So if they show you that those diagonals are congruent, then automatically they have an isosceles trapezoid. And that's what that isosceles trapezoid is? This one. This one. Yes. Where my legs are congruent. Okay? Um, so we could do this on a, a coordinate plane again. And so, uh, the easiest thing for proving this on a coordinate plane, I would actually just do the diagonals and do the distance formula between the diagonals. That would be the, probably the fastest way. Otherwise, you'd have to do, um, try to figure out what the slopes were that exactly the same and all that kind of stuff. So the easiest way is to actually just do the distance formula for the two diagonals, if you can prove that they're the exact same distance in that point of view. Okay? And we'll also show you one of those here when we get to the examples. So from there then we introduce something called the mid-segment. And this is just for a trapezoid. 
So if I said a mid uh, or a median, would you understand what a median was? Yeah. A median was what when we did it with a triangle? Oh, the middle. The middle, right? Okay. So how could we have a median or a mid segment of a trapezoid? Middle of a triangle, square or Okay, good thought. One of the sides, right? So if I'm going to do one of the sides, it has to go to the other side, right? So a mid segment is going to be where I can find this point and this point, and then I draw a line straight across, and it should divide it in half, right? The median, okay? So a segment that joins, how can we say it? Cam was on the, probably the closest way. What are, what are we joining there with those two dots? Legs. Yeah, but the two dots on those legs would be what? The midpoints, yeah. So joins the midpoints of the what? Okay, but what part of the? Of the legs. So in order for me to find the mid-segment, I'm probably going to have to have a midpoint. So what's my midpoint formula? Uh, it's the average, right? The average of the x's. So I'm going to take the two x's and add them together and divide it by two, not the difference of it. And then remember, it's a midpoint, so it's a comma. And then I'm going to do the y's the same way, right? So it's the average of the x's and the average of the y's. So to find this point right here, I'd have to know that point right there and that point right there, and I'd stick it into that formula, the x's and the y's. Okay. But what does a mid-segment do? A mid-segment, or sorry. So we can then try to figure out what this mid-segment is, and where does it look like it is in comparison to the rest of the trapezoid? It's in the middle, right? So what are we really going to do? <coughs> We're going to be able to have um, a formula too. So this leads us to where are we at? Twenty-four. Yeah. Good thing we don't have to remember all these, right? A mid segment. Sometimes gets some people confused. The measure would be basically the distance of it. So when we say the measure of a mid segment, we're saying what's the distance from this midpoint to this midpoint, or the overall distance in between there. Okay, is what? When you said it was the in in between, it's half, right? So it's one half. What? How else could you say it? Of the bases, right? So what are, we, what are we really doing? It's one half the sum of the bases. So basically they're saying, if we would do a mid-segment, they would tell me that this is uh, 10 and this is 25, and they're gonna ask me what that distance is in the middle. So what would I do? 10 plus 25 is 35 divided by two tells me what it is. And then it's a distance, so I gotta have some kind of me measurement. So we'd say it's what, 17 and a half oh, yeah. units in this case, because we didn't have anything, but if they gave us a, a measurement, then we'd put it on there. Okay? So that's one of my mid seconds. Any questions there? So, the last little part, or the last quadrilateral that we wanna talk about, is a kite. Anybody draw a kite when we did this at the beginning? Yeah, a kite's kind of like a diamond, right? So, what makes a kite? So, here's my kite. This is an old school kite, right? Because now, basically anything can be turned into a kite nowadays, it seems like. But that's an old school kite. 
Okay, so what's a kite? Nothing's nothing is parallel. Quadrilateral. Okay. Two opposite Somebody said. A quadrilateral. So we still have a four-sided figure. Go ahead now. What are you gonna guess? The uh, diagonals are perpendicular. Okay, so how do I say that? Do I want to say opposite sides? No, because they're right. consecutive, though. Because the consecutive is not on top of them. Yeah. Because they're consecutive. I mean, it's far from this. So, I don't know what to say. Opposite. A quadrilateral with exactly, you guys are on the right track. Two pairs of, we're going to use the word that Cam wanted to use, but he just didn't quite understand how to use it. Two pairs of consecutive, what's that mean? Next to each other. After. Back to back or next to each other, right? So would you consider this back to back? Yeah. yeah. And then these two back to back? Yeah. yeah. So what is the relationship between this side and this side? They're congruent. Two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. What? Yes, you can say it that way. Yes, you can say it that way. So we come back here and we do what? Right? Everybody agree with that? Okay, so that's a kite. So we have another theorem. If a quadrilateral is a kite, kites are fun, right? Sure. The diagonals are what to each other? Perpendicular. Perpendicular to each other. What's that mean? Again. So let's draw them out. It wasn't. So to prove everybody that that's perpendicular, we automatically put a what? A box. box. So again, don't say it out loud. What else has perpendicular diagonals? Don't say it out loud. What else has perpendicular diagonals? What do we say? A square. A rhombus. A rhombus and a square. Okay, not a rectangle. Because one's longer than the other. Okay? And then one more. There, um, holy cow, what, 626? Yeah. Are we done after that? Man, I think so. Right. In chapter 6. The full oh, you want to get in chapter? I have no idea. If a quadrilateral is a kite. I've never taught this class before. Why? I don't know. Then, exactly one pair of opposite angles. So think about that for a second. What does it mean by opposite angles? Across from each other is a great way of saying it. Is congruent. Or is it R? No, one pair is, right? So which one is it? So let's call it uh, kite. We're going to call it kite. So our I and E are K and T congruent. K and T. So how would we say that? The angles between what? Okay, the different ones, right? So I'm going to say it's the angles between the non-congruent sides, right? Yeah. That's how you remember which set of angles it is. It is. So here's a congruent side with this way, but the two non-congruent sides, those are my angles that are. So, K so again now, K and T are the exact same thing, 
I and E, they might be, but they're probably not. So again, all four of them would add up to what? 360, right? Now we go back to our polygon of S equals N minus 2 times 180. So 4 minus 2 is 2 times 180 is 360. So if these two are the same, how do I find those two? I can do that, right? Or sorry, I really probably need those two, and then I can definitely find these two. Because I would subtract the two that I knew from 108 or 360, and then divide that by two, because they should be the same thing. Make sense? Gabriel, questions today? Gabriel, are you uh, sad today? Yeah. No, I don't like this. Jack's turn the thing, please. All right, here we go. So obviously we got a pail here or something. Oh, they call it a basket. So we don't care about the little handle. We're caring about the, the main part of it, right? Each side of the basket shown is an isosceles trapezoid. So boom, all of a sudden you got to think about everything, right? Isosceles trapezoid. So what's true about JL and KM? They're congruent. What's true about JM and KL? They're congruent, right? So, if the measure of angle JML is 130, KN is 6.7, and LN is 3.6, can I find the measure of angle MJK? So there's a lot of things going on here in the question, but we don't need that for every single part, right? So what are we really concerned about in, in this particular case? The angles, right? We're throwing out the sides, or the lengths right now. So if JML is 130, what is MJK? Where's MJK? It's this top one right here, right? So if this is 130, what's this one? 50, I just subtract them, right? Everybody good with that? So I'm guessing if they gave me KN was being 6.7 and they gave me LN as being 3.6, they're going to ask me to find KL. Can I find KL? No. Why? Why? Yeah, because of what? Where is it? Yeah, whatever. We got too many of them, right? The diagonal one, right? Trapezoid and diagonals are congruent, right? That helps us out, but we also know that. Um, No, we don't know that it's perpendicular, do we? Okay, so can we find that aside? Well, I thought you said D is the whole side. Oh, we're talking about KL. My diagonals aren't necessarily perpendicular, right? No, we talked about Not in this one. So, maybe they didn't ask that. I was thinking of two different things, maybe. That could be two. All right, so they say find MN. Okay, so, oh yeah. So if KN is 6.7 and JL is 10.3, can I find MN? Yes. So again, KN is 6.7. The whole thing over here is 10.3, but they want this little part. So subtract them. Just subtract them, right? Because they are congruent, right? So I apologize. No, no perpendiculars. Um, so we come here. The coordinate plane ones are basically um, show whether it is an isosceles trapezoid. So again, the easiest way for me to show that this is an isosceles trapezoid is to do the um, distance formula from here to here, and then do the distance formula from here to here. In this case, there's probably not an easy way to draw the little triangles, right? Because remember, when we draw the little triangles, we have to make sure that they're right triangles. And if I draw this diagonal right here, I'm not making a right triangle. So I have to use the distance formula in this one. Everybody remember distance formula? Yeah. Difference of the x is squared plus the difference of the y is squared. Can you square root? Can you yeah, make, square root. make your triangle with the sides and if they're not the same? Um, you could do that as long as you could make a right triangle. But again, yeah, so I could do this and figure out the lengths of these sides. You're right there. Yep. 
So I can do it that way, yes. So are my uh, sides the same? Heck no, right? If I go over this way and down, compared to over this way and down, are those triangles the same? Heck no. So they want to use the slope one, no. But we don't want to do that because that's way more work. Since the legs are not congruent, as uh, Cam saw, it is not. So then we go to the mid-segment mid one. In the figure, MN is a mid-segment of the trapezoid. What is the value of x? So here you're just doing it backwards, kind of, right? So we're using this formula right here. And this formula for the mid-segment would be 1 half B1 plus B2, right? Essentially. But now they give us the mid-segment. So I'm going to say 30 is equal to 1 half. And then I'm always going to make the other one, or whichever one they give me, the second one. You don't have to, but I would, I would always do it that way. So again, to solve this for this B, what do I have to do to one half? I'm dip, well, you could distribute it, but then you're going to deal with more fractions. I would just get rid of this by multiplying by 2 on both sides. So if I multiply by 2, I get 60 here, and that cancels that out, which leaves, leaves me with B plus 20. And then if I want B all by itself, I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides, and I get 40. This one right here, you probably could have just looked at it and knew that it was 40, 20, 30, 40, because it just gradually. But this would be the math for anything with like decimals or anything that you would actually have to do that way. Does that make sense? But that's the formula that basically you're using. Make sense to everybody? So again, hopefully you can just see that it's gradually going up by 10 and you could have done that problem anyway. But. Um, and then we get to our kite. So here's my kite. WXYZ is a kite. Find the measure of angle XYZ. So again, where's XYZ? It's to the right, right? X, Y, Z is the angle way to the right. So what is congruent? Do we have another 121 degree angle or do we have another 73 degree angle? 121, right? It's always the one in between my congruent sides. So how do I find out? Don't just jump to the conclusion that Y is 73, right? I'd have to do what? So I'm going to do 121 times 2 plus 73 minus 180. Or 360, thank you. 360. Everybody agree? Oh, you just said 180. Yes, I said 180 again by mistake. 360 because it's a quadrilateral, right? Anybody do the math? No. Anybody uh, want to do the math? You just said the n minus 2 thing. Or what you do? No, I'm taking this right here it has to be 121. Yeah. So I'm going to take 121 plus 121 plus 73 and subtracting it from 360. Everybody good at that? Need to see the math? Gabriel, did you do it in your head? No. All right, so why did they tell us this one? So they look at our kite here. Doesn't look like a normal kite, it looks more like a diamond, right? So basically, the outside of a diamond could be considered a kite. But now, now we're doing our perpendicular. So this is my perpendicular one that I was jumping towards. Right here, right? The diagonals are perpendicular. So to find NP, even though that they don't give me that sign, I can just flip those numbers over, right? And I'm going to do the Pythagorean theorem. So if I have 6 squared plus 8 squared, what is my other number? What's 36 plus 64? Huh? What's the square root of 100? 10. 10? So my number should be 10. Agree to that? Everybody understand what I'm saying here? Okay. That's a fun one. Um, that's it. Questions? Anybody need to see more of those? So why do you square? Sorry? The last one, bud? Yeah, why do you square? Um, this one I'm just doing Pythagorean theorem. So because my uh, this rule right here, it's the diagonals are perpendicular to each other, yeah. so they're down and over. So where that R is, there's a box, 